Hello, I'm Captain Spaulding. That was fucking stupid, and I'm Mally. <laughs> you did Yoda one time, so... That's a good point. Uh, and this That's is fair. the Silver Linings Playlist. We are a podcast that tries to find the silver lining in some of cinema's bleakest endings, uh, today's episode notwithstanding. Um, We've been really nailing that grammatical error that we fixed a few weeks ago. I know. We, we, it's, we're, everything's clicking here halfway through season two. <laughs> Way to go, us. Um, if this is your first time listening, first of all, thank you for stumbling upon us. Uh, what we do here is we like to take movies that don't end with you feeling too great. Um, so movies that have sad endings, fucked up endings, weird endings, just whenever you walk away from this movie, you're thinking, man, that was not a, that was, I don't feel great. Uh, we'd like to find a glimmer of hope, a silver lining, whatever you want to call it, something to latch on to. Uh, by the time the credits start rolling, where you can feel a little more optimistic. Um, this week's not that difficult, I don't think, uh, for us to find silver linings for. At least, um, maybe I'm speaking out of turn, but yeah, I, what do you think, Mally? What else is new? <laughs> Was this one e- an easy one for you to find? Um. Okay, well, I gotta start off by saying we have to ignore the obvious one. Mm-hmm. Due to the announcement of a sequel to this film? I disagree. <laughs> little, uh, maybe I'm giving a, maybe I'm uh, slipping my hand, showing my cards a little too early, but. A little bit, a little bit. Um, um, yeah, I don't know. I, I, me and Sammy were talking about this after finishing the movie about like an hour ago. And I don't know. I feel like we can't, we can't go with the obvious it's like the hopeful silver lining now that we know there's a sequel to this movie. Well, that's a good segue to introduce our guest for this episode. Mally, do you want to do the introductions? Hi, Sammy. Hi, guys. <laughs> Great to have you, Sammy. Great to be here. Was this your? This wasn't your first time seeing this movie, was it? Yes, it was. I have also Ooh. never seen uh, the original, the the first one. The House, House of, of a Thousand, Thousand Corpses, Corpses, right? Yeah, so yeah. I was thrown right into this. So this is interesting. Mally, how, how many times have you seen House of a Thousand Corpses? 103. So this is great. We have a total spectrum here because this is your first time, Sammy, seeing this movie and not having seen the original. I've only seen the original once and seen this movie four or five times. And then Mally's apparently an expert. So, <laughs> so we'll, we'll have a well, full range. Well versed in this film. Um, See, so I, don't, I don't think you have to, like, House of a Thousand Corpses isn't absolutely necessary no, it's not. to enjoy this movie. Like, no. there, like, there are a few little things, like, as, like, the opening credits for this started, I was like, oh, Sammy, by the way, this, 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 that's all you need to know. Yeah. Because, um, I mean, tonally, they're completely different. Well, actually, let's get into that. So, Mally, what was the first time you saw this movie, and what was your initial reaction? I saw it in theaters, because, of course, I did. <laughs> um, no, like, this was, like, kind of... This was, you know, back in the time, the kind of resurgence of, like, the Grindhouse genre. Mm-hmm. And this movie is Grindhouse as fuck. I agree. Anyway. No, I saw this movie in theaters with uh, one of my best friends. And, I don't know, we dug it. Like, it's fucking balls to the wall. It's, like, hillbilly, backwoods, fucked up, redneck, murderous trio. Yeah. And yeah, just you know, really made me nostalgic for home and you know family, <laughs> and it's a family. Fi- it's really, I mean, it's a family centric <laughs> film. Let's be honest. Yeah, um, I probably saw this one a few years after it came out. I want to say probably like oh seven oh eight. Um, I enjoyed it. I didn't uh, know it was a sequel to House of a Thousand Corpses, and then I had, I hadn't seen that film until actually kind of recently. I saw it maybe two years ago um but i'd see i've seen devil's rejects a, a handful of times in fact other than this rewatch the last time i saw it was actually at my old job uh at the indian theater in orlando florida where they had what i believe was a 35 millimeter print yeah it. wait i went to that with you yes yes you did Holy i forgot shit. sorry i no, I, was, I was drinking so much moonshine that night that i don't remember <laughs> yeah that much was a good it. night it was a great night was, I, had an, I had like three old fashions that movie on a big screen uh with a crowded theater and a bunch of alcohol is just a fun it's a fun movie to watch with a bunch great of great times were had by all i agree <laughs> um 
So yeah, I, this movie is like I almost didn't even need to rewatch it this time, but I did, and I noticed some things before that I hadn't noticed before. So uh, interesting. Yeah, we'll get into that. So interesting. Sammy, this was uh, your first time, so you want to tell us what your what your initial thoughts are on it? Yeah, sure. And you, uh, you so said you just saw this a few hours ago, right? Yeah, we yeah, we, we just finished it like hour, maybe yeah, an maybe hour an ago. hour ago. Interesting. So it's, it's, okay, it's very fresh in my mind. Okay. Um, one of the things that I mentioned to Mally that there was a lot of butts in the movie. There is a lot of butts. <laughs> yeah. There really is. Like, <laughs> That's I, a good really point. Is. I didn't like. I never noticed that until Sammy kept pointing it out. <laughs> yeah, a lot of male um, butts, a lot of female butts. It's 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 a gender neutral. Everyone gets their fair share. <laughs> <laughs> a lot of equality. Yeah, a lot of equality. Yeah, yeah. This movie was really ahead of its time. Really was. Yeah. Really was. It was paving the way. <laughs> um but oh I, I was i said to myself uh the first like the opening scene like the shootout yeah. reminded me of the movie red state the kevin yes Smith movie. yes uh because it, it's kind of like the same tone almost in a way where mm-hmm. they're like the cult and you know they have the big shootout at the end yeah so that reminded me of red state although that did come out years later mm-hmm. uh i think and like, this movie opened with yeah this movie opened shootout. with that red yeah. state closed out with that but uh, this movie was a lot of fun, and even though that I didn't see House of a Thousand Corpses, it was really easy to follow along to and just figure out what was going on. Like, you don't need to see the first one yeah, to watch I agree. this one. You can I just agree. dive right into it. Um, yeah, I I kind of feel like this might be, like, Rob Zombie's, like, his pivotal, his seminal film. Like, it's his this his peak, kind of, mm-hmm. like, it, 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 it's messy at some parts, but on the whole, it's a fairly well-constructed made movie. Like... To start off with that uh, shootout scene and to not really expect the people who are watching your movie to know your previous film, like it, it kind of stands on its own pedestal, which is pretty great. Like to uh, for if someone as fresh at directing as Rob Zombie was at the time, I think it's yeah, pretty cause impressive. Because this, this was his second film after Thousand Corpses, right? Yeah, I think so. Um, well, and it, dude, it's crazy. Good. All right. Like, especially going in, having seen House of a Thousand Corpses, like, you know the Firefly Firefly family Mm -hmm. are a bunch of, like, depraved, horrible, murderous people. Yeah. And you're kind of rooting for them in this movie. Well, we'll get into that, because that's definitely a note I got written down. And that is fucking brilliant. Let's let's get into uh, some backstory. So, if you don't know, Devil's Rejects is from the year 2005. As we mentioned, the director is Rob Zombie. Uh, the film stars a pretty stellar cast, uh, if you're into horror. Sid Haig, Bill Mosley, Sherry Moon Zombie, Ken Free, Matthew McRory, uh, Leslie Easterbrook, Jeffrey Lewis, Priscilla Barnes, William Forsyth, Kate Norby, and Lou Temple. Uh, budget of $7 million, managed to gross $19 million worldwide, uh, but currently sits at a 53% on Rotten Tomatoes. Uh, feels a little low. Uh... You think it's a 53? You know, Roger Ebert gave this film three stars out of four, right? Really? Yeah. I was pretty surprised to see that. That's fucking awesome. Yeah. Uh, Shout out him. Speaking of, let's get into the trailer so we can kind of just discuss that real quick. What police have uncovered reads like this. Words can't describe it. Are we here? We are playing on a level that most will never see. You're gonna start the killing. You best start it right here. Um, I guess I kind of wanted to ask, uh, did you, Sammy, did you see this trailer before seeing the movie? Nope. We just watched the trailer a few minutes ago. 
Okay, cool. Um, <laughs> so you had you really didn't know much about this movie, or did you kind of know about it? Like, was it in the the ethos of like the the type of movies you're interested in, or were you just um, going out completely blind? I I definitely like these type of movies, and I haven't ever looked into this. Like, I never looked up a trailer or anything, but I do remember Mally mentioning it. It to me like a few months ago but mm-hmm. that was the extent of my knowledge of this movie <laughs> and my constant quoting of it yeah when we were watching <laughs> i was like wow mally you say a lot of things from this movie and, <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> uh so i feel like i know mally better now after watching this movie oh uh but no i didn't know anything going into it never really heard of it and unless mally mentioned it yeah and i realized that i don't think i had ever seen a trailer for this movie in fact when like trying to find the trailer for it it's kind of difficult to find um you come across some that look official but at the same time kind of look fan made um dude the official trailer for this movie looks <laughs> fan made I, I agree yeah the one we just heard uh it totally like, looks fan made grind it's like super like 1970s like grindhouse as fuck yeah it's, which is it's, exactly what i mean exactly what rob zombie was going for with this movie so like i get it like yeah. the whole like grindhouse seventies aesthetic is all over this fucking movie. Yeah, it heavily leans into that and the film's better search for it. Um so yeah, let's actually get into the movie proper. Um is there anything you want to discuss, Mally, uh, up front, since this was your your pick, uh, or do you want to just kinda go beat by beat? Like what do you want to do? Um I don't really care. Let's just talk about shit that was wild in this movie. <laughs> um, um, I do want to start off with the recasting of Mama Firefly. Oh, okay. See, I... If you haven't seen House of a Thousand Corpses, yeah. Mama Firefly is played by two different actresses. Okay. I didn't I didn't recognize that. Um, but then again, I've only seen House one time, so... Um, the Again, the characters are vastly different between movies, like... Baby, for the most part, is kind of the same, but, like, I was telling Sammy, like, Otis in House Without Corpses is, like, a clean-shaven, like, he still has long hair, but it's, like, completely long white hair, he's super pale, he's basically albino. Isn't he, like, not very funny either? Doesn't he have, like, a very stoic kind of personality? Yeah, for sure. And then in this one, you know, he's fucking hilarious, for one. Yeah. He's just, like, bearded out, like, fucking backwoods, fucking as fuck. Yeah, he looks scary. Um, um, it's, it's got a very, like the dialogue and the way these characters are written, it's got a very, it reminds me of Tarantino. Like the dialogue feels but like a little shittier, right? Well, <laughs> well it, like Rob Zombie's own personal style spin on it, but like the characters are like likable, but they shouldn't be because they're villains and just the, the back and forth where like everyone's at each other's throats all the time. It's got a very Tarantino type feel to it. And it doesn't Everyone, hurt. Every single character in this movie hates every other single character. Yeah, and it doesn't hurt that like this came all, out around the time of Grindhouse. Like, all Baby and Otis do in this movie and Spalding is fucking argue. Mm-hmm. <laughs> yeah. um, and point guns. And point guns. A lot of, a lot of gun pointing. Yeah, the, the combination of, like, the hillbilly redneck characters combined with, like, the lawlessness and, like, the 1970s time frame makes it just super extra creepy and very unique sub genre because it's like this texas chainsaw and there's only probably like a handful others but it's i think rob zombies dominated this this sub genre Mm -hmm. like also let's talk about the soundtrack for a minute okay (laughs) um just saying as far as using songs from the 70s Mm -hmm. who did it better this movie or guardians of the galaxy this movie this movie open the opening like credits of this movie play to the song Midnight Rider. And they're <laughs> fucking amazing. That's the best use of that song ever. I just there's what there's one song from this movie that's also in Guardians, and I literally I think I looked at Sammy as like, alright, who used it better? <laughs> I don't know, man. I, I don't think they're I think it's is it I think it's fooled around and fell in love. Maybe. I don't I don't think it's very sure comparable. It I think I mean they both do it well. Um this I, I don't know, man. I I can't deal with if I were to listen to the soundtrack by itself, I think I would lose my mind. I don't. It works for the movie, but it's and not. That's where we differ. I can't just I'm sit down and in, listen. Dustin. I can't sit down and just. It's painful. I maybe because I grew up in the South and that's all I ever fucking heard, so it's the last thing I want to hear. Mm, but uh, it it works in the movie. Don't get me wrong. <laughs> this movie reminds you a lot of Home, Dustin. No, God, God. It reminds me why I should never go back. <laughs> um, <laughs> so yeah. So anyway, when are you coming to visit Georgia, man? Yeah. I mean, like... <laughs> so. I gotta ask uh, as well, like whose whose story is this movie? 
Like, who whose story is this? Is it is it the rejects? And if so, why should I root for them? Is it just because they're likable? Because it's an interesting I mean, dynamic where... I mean, you definitely have, like, part of the story is the reject story, but then you also have, like, Officer Wydell. Like, mm-hmm. you, you're with him, I think, almost as much as you are with the rejects. And then, of course, towards the end, the movies or the stories really, like, clash into one, and that's where all fucking hell breaks loose. Right. Like, it's an interesting dynamic where you're mostly with the villains of the movie who are framed as the protagonist, but if I if it's the reject's story, then I shouldn't be rooting for the sheriff when he finally catches him, because I do. I don't know if I shift from rejects to sheriff, but I feel like on this rewatch, I was mostly on the sheriff's side, and, like, I had no qualms with how his the whole torture scene between him and the rejects went. I was See, like, yeah, I, go for it. <laughs> I could never fully be on his side because, like, from his first scene, I was like, I don't like this guy. Like, he's kind of a douche. But they oh, yeah, killed I his brother. <laughs> huh? But they killed his brother. Well, yeah, but you don't know that at the at first. They, well, he tells them. I mean, maybe not yeah, during the opening later. scene. Not during the opening scene, but immediately afterwards. Not, also, um, they, okay. are, they have people in cages in their basement. Yeah, I'm not saying I side with them immediately. Like, I think at the beginning of this movie, I'm not really rooting for anyone. I'm just kind of along for the ride. But at a certain point, I do, like, you do start to kind of emphasize, or not emphasize. Empathize? Sympathize. Empathize, yes, thank you. (laughs) With the rejects, for sure. Do you? Where where does that switch come? I kind of do. Dude, you're telling me by the, I don't want to jump to the end of this movie, but I going to that's fine jump to the end you're telling me that at the end of this fucking movie when they're fucking just balls to the wall speeding towards the cops Freebird is just fucking <laughs> blasting you're not like fist pumping like fuck woo let's go i'm rooting for the cops you're a fucking dick <laughs> these, these are not good people Bally. No, I agree, but the cops aren't fucking good people either, or at least Wydell. Wydell wasn't, and he's dead now. Okay, well... <laughs> well, let's, we, let's, let's, let's split the difference. Sammy, what do you think? Who do you think... Uh, we who, don't know that those cops this? are good people, too. <laughs> we um, don't meet them. I was kind of split, because in the beginning, like Mally said, when you first meet the sheriff, he's kind of a dick. He just shows up yes. to their house and starts spraying bullets everywhere. And, like, for me, I was like, why is he doing this? And I assumed that they were bad people, and then I saw the people in the cages, and then I found out about his brother. So, like, I was on his side. I was like, I hope he catches them. Yeah. But then, at the end, when their house was on fire, and Tiny shows up, I was kind of happy for them. I was like, oh, they escaped. And, like, for, for, like, a few seconds, I was on their side, and then I was back to the sheriff's side. It's such a... Like, I was, like, happy for them that they, they escaped him. Yeah, it's such a weird... Like, I, I don't think I've seen a movie do this before, where I'm... I mean, like, the closest thing I could think of is, like, in the Halloween franchise or the Friday the 13th franchise, you're kind of rooting for the villain to get the kills, right? Like, you you mm-hmm. want you watch those movies to see how Jason's going to kill someone new this time, or how Freddy's going to kill someone new this time, but you're not really with the villain that much. In this one, you're... It's, like, almost half and half, maybe more so for the rejects. Um, like, don't get me wrong. During the scene at the motel, I am absolutely not on their side. That's what I'm that saying. It's, it's is weird. massively uncomfortable to watch. It's weird that it flip flops so back and up. forth like that. And I don't think I. That's why I think it's like this is like his peak movie. I I don't think he can maybe top it or I don't know. Like I enjoy the Halloween reboot for what it is. Me too. But man. I think this movie is way way better crafted, directed. I think the story. Yeah, it's just it's such a interesting concept to go back and forth like that, and this, it's ambiguous. This is one of the first movies too, like because this came out in 05, like because like back then movies always looked like you know like they were you know they wouldn't show blemishes on an actor's face mm-hmm. or like you know everything was very clean still, but like in the, I remember watching this movie the first time just being like everything looks fucking dirty like yeah. no one looks the camera looks very dirty <laughs> good in this movie like even right. like like mm-hmm. even like the you know the female characters they they like you can see like fucking dirt and grease and pores on their face and i just remember being fucking amazed by that i was like fucking yeah it's a very is, diy like, it looks feeling like fucking film. real life yeah it's and like very that's DIY. like a big 
that's like a huge fucking like look now of like everything yeah. looking more like real world than it used to. Yeah. Like back when, you know, every actor would have like a pound of makeup on and look like they were photoshopped constantly. Yeah. Um, cause at the, t- I remember when this movie came out on DVD, I owned compared to like the 300 DVDs I think I own right now. I think I owned two movies at the time. I owned a copy of this and a copy of Mean Girls. <laughs> it's a good combination. And so those would just be like, oh, wait, I owned a third. It was a it was a a live DVD that of George Harrison's concert for Bangladesh. Okay. So I had three things that would just get in like go in rotation on like this little 15-inch shitty colored TV where like everyone looked orange all the time. Yeah. Mm-hmm. So I was just heavily rotating George Harrison mean girls and this so like yes yeah, i think that's why i watch this movie so many times i love that those are on like opposite sides of the spectrum <laughs> oh yeah. yeah i feel like that george harrison one's really in the middle though <laughs> i feel like if mean girls isn't your pick me up movie alternative at the end of this episode you've done our fans a big disservice <laughs> <laughs> um well, fucking spoilers dustin jesus i think i realized this I time come up with something else i think i don't think at the bitch. time when i first saw this movie that i realized it was a quote-unquote grindhouse film because I, w- I wasn't familiar with that term i saw it as just a pure horror film and it was confusing to me because i always thought this is just all too much like it's the big rig hitting the girl the chicken fucking scene like it's all <laughs> the chicken fucking scene is goddamn amazing it's pretty funny um but yeah, I just, I just always thought these characters are so over-the-top evil that it's ridiculous. And now I'm getting that that's kind of the point. Like, these characters don't could not possibly exist in the real world. It's just so ridiculous, some of the stuff they do. Um, but yeah, it it it's weird because it's like, like kind of that concept of like being so over-the-top that it's impossible to be offended by it. Like, just like when Tarantino shoots somebody and he just thinks that the human body is composed of nothing but blood and no bones or anything and they just explode into a pile of blood it's like it's hard to be offended by that because it's clearly a facade and just ridiculous hey, wait is that not true what that, that the human body is just filled with just blood nothing else i completely thought that was correct <laughs> well next time i have a gun we'll we'll figure it out okay <laughs> copy that um i i don't really have a lot more in terms of like the film on a whole i've got more just specific questions that let's sh- fucking shoot let's go um i feel like seeing you got nothing seeing ken forey in a movie just makes me want to rewatch the original dawn of the dead i was literally just looking at his imdb as you said that that's weird that's his Dude, best, how, best role how good is he as charlie altamont though he's so fucking funny in this movie but man it's it's like total night and day from his character in dawn of the dead Oh no, I agree. Mm-hmm. And I don't know, he's such a badass in in uh, Dawn of the Dead. And that movie is so fucking like it's it's perfect for him. And it's interesting that like he, him and Sid Haig both kind of found themselves in this like they're like legends in the horror genre. Like yeah, horror horror genre is weird because you usually you only get like the final girls and then whoever played like the slasher are like the, the right. big and well known. So you, it's not really like. I think there's probably only a handful of people that originally started off in horror movies that ended up becoming, like, A-list celebrities. Um, mm-hmm. But, yeah, Ken Forey and Sid Haig both have dominated that, that the, the horror Which, genre. Can we talk about how their characters are brothers? Yeah. <laughs> Which is a detail that never gets addressed, and I fucking love it. Yeah, I do like that they never address how that, how that is. <laughs> I also like, like, because you never, like... In House of Thousand Corpses, he's always referred to as Captain Spaulding yeah. or that fucking clown or whatever. Yeah. Um, and I, for some reason, I don't know why, I love that his name, his actual real name is Cutter. Yeah. It's, it's a very That's just southern a cool name. fucking name. Yeah, it's a very oh, southern name. Southern as fuck. Um, I gotta ask, just to go around the, the group, who's who's your favorite reject? Out, out of, like, the trio? Out of the Firefly family. And it could be the mom. It could be Captain Spaulding. Whoever. Tiny. I mean, d- does Charlie count? <laughs> I guess you can call Charlie. Well, he's not really yeah. a member of the Firefly family, though. Let's, let's, um, let's stick with just, the, just the, the main three, then. Let's just go with the ones on the poster. Who's your oh, favorite? Oh, man. Ooh. 
It's I, for me. It's Otis. Yeah, yeah. Otis is I'm a badass. Go. Like Otis. Cutter Spalding has some of the best one-liners, though. Yeah, but Otis is just a. But I think force. overall, Otis is the best one. Yeah, he's just so menacing, man. That beard, like he just looks. And it's funny too because before I knew what Rob Honestly, Zombie looked like, honestly, that's the look I'm going for too. <laughs> before I knew what Rob Zombie looked like, I assumed that was him, and it's not far really? off. But yeah, like no. no. And Priscilla watched this with me last night. Make too. his hair a little bigger. Yeah, Pris- and, yeah, Priscilla watched this with me last night too, and she said that she was. Isn't that Rob Zombie? And I was like, no, but like you're not far off. <laughs> it's yeah, <laughs> that's pretty fucking close. I mean, me and Otis both have bat tattoos on our chest, so like if I just keep growing my hair out a little bit. I'm fucking there, man. All right, so we're in consensus, though. Way. Yeah, we're in consensus. It's Otis, right? Oh, yeah. Yeah, no, absolutely, Otis. Yeah, I feel Dude, like... he like, he is a badass mm-hmm. in this movie. No yeah. holds barred. He gets really... Fu- like, I think he gets the most fucked up out of all three of them. He gets the, the darkest end. quote, for sure. I am the devil, yeah. and I am here yeah. to do the devil's yes. work. Yes. Which apparently is almost verbatim something one of the uh, people said... The uh, one of the Manson followers said mm. at yeah. the Tate House yeah. whenever they murdered them. Yeah, interesting. Just fucked up. It's it's crazy because he's got like Rob Zombie's kind of cultivated like this own cinematic universe that's very specific, like the Groucho Marx references, the mm-hmm. the seventies time frame, the redneck hillbilly cults. Like it's all very specific, but at the same time feels familiar. Yes. Right. It's it's like we- weirdly familiar. Like yeah. I love they they reference like the Groucho Marx references yeah. in the movie. Yeah, like all of the Firefly family go by aliases from Groucho Marx films. Yeah, which is fucking awesome. Um, I think I, I kind of a qualm I have with the movie is I think Brian Posehn goes out too early. <laughs> he like he's. He I does not belong agree, in this movie. I man. <laughs> I agree. He's so out of place in this movie, but he's so funny. Like, it's to see him get <laughs> shot immediately. <laughs> he had some weird lines in the beginning. Like, just like, yeah, I'm going to get some beef jerky from the gas station. Yeah. <laughs> and then the brand that he calls out, it's very specific. Like, I got the <laughs> yeah. Dr. J's Hickory, whatever the that fuck was. was. Their, <laughs> that was their one... Product placement. Product placement. And I, was that even a real? Is that even a real brand of, of beef jerky? I t- honestly have no idea. <laughs> I feel like it's made up. Um, but yeah, I, I think Brian Posehn brings a comedic element to the movie that's otherwise kind of absent. Like, there's comedic moments, but it's all very dark humor. Like, uh, oh yeah, yeah, like the the cat, the Charlie, and uh, the whole chicken fucking scene. Like, that's it's funny, but it's like. That's like the only moment that the film takes out to be comedic, I think. Uh, I beg to differ. Okay. My <laughs> intention. One of my funny. favorite scenes is the tutti fucking tutti fucking fruity. Okay, scene, I'll give which you that. Is why it was the hint. I'll give you and that. And like just that, like that fucking cut of like, there was no fucking ice cream in your foreseeable fucking future. Cuts to them eating ice yeah. cream. Mm-hmm. <laughs> and just like that, it's like it's almost like a cute moment. Yeah. Where like they're just like it sitting there fucking with them. Otis and like. You know, puts the ice cream on his nose and they all laugh yeah. and even he kind of smirks. And like, they just murdered yeah. a whole <laughs> fucking family in I, a motel. I, yeah, that's the brilliance of the movie, though. It humanizes them and you immediately are laughing and you completely forget that they just murdered like six people. <laughs> it's sadistic in a way. Yeah. it's They just murder people yeah. and then they're doing like a regular human activity that you do, like when you're happy or something. And I'm sure there's some kind of like a uh, statement that Zombie's trying to make like culturally... But I mean, it's it's kind of heady if you get too far into it, and just I think this I think this movie is most enjoyable if you just look at it as pure entertainment. Um, oh yeah, absolutely. But t- I gotta say, Tutti fucking fruity, and, and, and there's no ice cream in your fucking future is probably my most quoted lines from this movie. <laughs> <laughs> I'm pretty sure I have heard you say that. Yeah. To your fiance yeah. before. There is no fucking <laughs> ice cream in your future. <laughs> like I'm. I'm pretty sure you said that to her when we were all hanging out like uh, two weeks ago when I was in L.A. with you Probably. Guys. It's like I said, it's got that Tarantino like f- like feel, that grittiness, but it's like also super quotable to it. That it's, it's impressive for it only being his second film. Um, yeah. I, I do got to say, though, if we're talking about humanizing the rejects and making them not just be like these complete forces that are unstoppable, I feel like. One of the rejects should have gone out earlier in the film, 
uh, like other than the mom. I don't. I mean, maybe it's controversial I mean, well, to say because you have um, what's his? Well, I can't tiny. remember. No, not tiny. Um, the one that looks like a bigger, dark-haired Otis. I can't um, remember his name. I don't. I don't remember. But I mean, um, like of he, the, I mean, of the right main the trio. Oh, gotcha. I feel like one of them should have gone out. I mean, I, but then again, that's coming from just the story's narrative. Like it, the characters are feel invincible to me mm-hmm. until uh, obviously the end. But I, I just mean, feel I like think that's kind of the point. Yeah. Well, I mean, I get that, but if we're looking at it without the Rufus, the sequel, it's fucking Rufus. Oh, okay. If you played by Tyler Maine, who played Michael Myers in his Halloween films. Yes. If you take the sequel out that's in production right now, and you look at it, it's just a standalone film. That it just it feels like I I want the characters to be I don't know I feel like the mom dying wasn't enough because they get tortured so brutally at the end of this movie and then they're still able to yeah. like walk away from it and it's like man come on and also like I feel like those two guys the two motel room guys could I don't know why they couldn't have gotten the jump on Otis out in the desert when they did. Like, I feel like... They th- tried, but they failed. They definitely tried. But I, I know, it's what I'm saying. I feel like they could have. I don't know wh- how, like... Otis gets slammed in the back of the head with that piece of wood, and then, like, I think, uh, like, another two more times, and is unfazed by it. <laughs> it's a bl- heavy blunt force trauma hit. Like, I don't know. He definitely should have had some type of, uh, like, reaction or... or yeah. Uh, like injury to that i disagree he's that badass guys like babe well, he, he is the devil he did say he and he you know he's gonna do some devil's work and he gets he gets the you know the railroad spikes through the hands and like oh mm, yeah. that oh nope, nope i nope, i nope, audibly nope, made a nope, sound nope, when nope, that happened i nope. was like ooh, ooh. and like the you made a few sounds <laughs> during the course of this movie just like oh and like oh, baby oh. gets shot in the back of the leg and even the sheriff mentions that he's clear she's clearly broken it and mm-hmm. I don't know. I feel like they should have like one of them should have died in the fire. I feel like maybe Captain Spaulding should have gone out in the fire. I thought he was gonna die. I thought he wasn't gonna make it because he was kind of like the leader of the three as the as the dad. Yeah. So I figured by the end he would be the one to go out, but all three of them survived yeah. until the very very end. Yeah, I feel like that if his character would have gone out, it would have like his character's purpose is kind of like to unite the family, and mm-hmm. I feel like he's done that. And with the sheriff gone, Baby and Otis could have gotten out together. And I kind of would have liked that. Um, just uh, just like I said, just to make it make me a little more afraid that these characters could die. Like, because the mom goes out and you're like, well, she wasn't really... She was separated immediately at the beginning. And I don't know. Maybe it's just me. I just wanted the, the, the story to hold up a little more to make me more uh, on the edge of my seat that these characters could die. Because they seem invincible. <laughs> Which, okay. if you take okay. the sequel that's in production right now and the rumors around that, take that as you will. Yeah. I mean, they definitely felt invisible with, you know, just going on a rampage of killing people and just kind of doing whatever. And recovering from their wounds, like, almost immediately. <laughs> Maybe they're yeah. immortal. I don't know how he was gripping that fucking steering wheel. Yeah, I know, oh, right? Oh, yeah, his hands should have just, just like, been... I'm just like, um... That's a good, that's okay. a good point. Maybe maybe he should have used his elbows to drive or something. Or fingertips. I, uh, maybe he was all tips. I don't know. I always forget Danny Trejo's in this movie. Uh, nice. And Diamond <laughs> Dallas Page. Yeah, I always forget they're in this movie. <laughs> Which, I was telling Sammy, do you know who was originally, like, who originally auditioned for Danny Trejo's role? No idea. Chris Jericho. <laughs> Imagine Jericho. And he didn't get it because Rob Zombie said he was too good looking. Yeah, he's, he's right. Yeah. Tre- I mean, Trejo no, looks he's right on. Yeah, mm-hmm. yeah, and he's, Trejo was a nice touch. Yeah, Tre- yeah. He, he definitely Love Trejo. He definitely has brings in like another level of gravitas to this movie. Like it's 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 great. I love Danny Trejo in this movie. Um, his uh his dialogue about the roaches when he was comparing yeah. them to the roaches was oh. the most Trejo fantastic yeah. like <laughs> conversation. See, I like to have. think that that was like before they ro- like before like. They slated or anything, and that was just him talking. <laughs> it was him improving. Um, just having a nice conversation with his buddies, I'm like, "Oh, we're rolling, fuck." <laughs> I've got uh, tacos. I've only got like a few like little details I wanted to talk about before we get into the ending. Um, unless you guys have something else you want to discuss. Um, uh, Sammy, are there any 
points you you would like to bring up? Or maybe up? questions that you don't have answered that maybe Mally or I could fill in on? Yeah. What was, uh, like, why did Charlie go back to the house at the end? Or should to we save that for the end? redeem himself. But yeah. was that his plan his whole time, or did he feel bad? I think he, I think felt, he bad. felt bad. Yeah. yeah. And then, I mean, he dies immediately. Uh, yeah, he gets hit, and then he's just out. Uh, Just immediately. Yeah. Which, that was like, that. I wonder if that's a Shining reference. Mm. Maybe. Because he, well, it is kind of interesting, because he's like one of the only black characters in the movie, and he gets yeah. killed by an axe. Yeah, yeah, immediately after showing up to save the day. Yeah, probably then. Exactly probably. like Homeboy from The Shining. Yeah, that's a good. That's a good point. I never noticed that. Yeah, um, digging deep on this one, Dustin. <laughs> I thought it, this is one of the first times where I actually put some thought into what I was going to say. Oh, that's good. I, I, I usually, I have I usually a question, just spitball then. this. I have a question oh, you God. might be able to answer. Okay. Um, what was with the uh, the line in the motel room about the jacket on the TV? Do you remember this? Oh, when like they're like when they first get in the motel and she's like, "Look at that fucking jacket." Yeah. And he's like, "What? What the fuck the?" J-? I yeah. honestly, I think it's just a little character. Is it? Thing a, I thought it was like Mitch making of mention like, of who was on the TV, but I didn't recognize who. it no, was. No, I think because it just goes to show like they're like you know kidnapping and fucking around with these people and ba- and it's so normal that baby can like take a second to notice a crazy yeah. wild looking sparkly jacket mm. on a, that's a good the point. tv okay. that's a good point mal are you hungry always well what kind of ice cream is your favorite tootie fucking fruity well there is no fucking ice cream in your future but there could be uh blu-rays in the future of our listeners if they go right now to reddit.com slash r slash Silverlinings playlist, and they go to the official discussion thread for the Devil's Rejects and leave this code that I'm about to give as a comment for a chance to win free stuff from us. Are you ready? That contest code is don't you like clowns? Don't you like clowns, Mally? They're fucking funny. Yep, they are very fucking funny. And if you want to win some free stuff right now, do that. Reddit.com slash r slash Silver Linings Playlist. Official discussion thread. Don't you like clowns as a comment. And chance to win some free stuff. But no ice cream. What about the the fake the fake sex scene dream? <laughs> In the beginning is that just Spalding? Is that just supposed With to be Spalding? funny? Or? Yeah, I think that's pure comedy and it's fucking amazing. It's funny, but it just seems Amazing pointless. fucking comedy. <laughs> It is, but it's so funny. Okay. <laughs> and I fucking, I love the fucking, just this, like, the switch of, like, him having this dream about fucking this, like... Girl, whore. Girl, mild, I guess, attractive in Captain Spaulding's life. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Um, and then it cuts to him <laughs> in bed with a... A much larger woman, woman yeah. <laughs> much, yeah, who mm-hmm. resembles him. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> um, and, like, I just like I just love that we get to see Captain Spaulding's, like, morning. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> like, he wa- like, he wakes up, and he's like, ah, fucking this shit again. Yeah. And, like, he's, like, all excited, like, oh, my commercial is going to be on the TV. Then he gets all pissed off when, yeah. like, the, the breaking, breaking news, news <laughs> enters his commercial. Then the phone rings, like, what the fuck now? Yeah. <laughs> it, um, it makes me think of, uh... Of uh, Rob Reiner and Wolf of Wall Street. <laughs> oh yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> um, I one do they? Uh, yeah, go ahead. S- sorry, one question. Do they? I can't remember. In House of the Dead Corpses, do they establish that Captain Spaulding is Baby's dad? Uh, I feel like they don't, and they just kind of throw it into this one. Maybe. And I, like I've only I seen like, it once. So. Like it works. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Um. Like, again, I think that's one of my favorite things about this movie is, like, they take literally these sadistic villains from House of a Thousand Corpses and are just like, hey, this is what they're like. Yeah. <laughs> like, Let it's just, it, again, family is really the core of this film, guys. <laughs> it's a family movie. Um, um, I, which I actually have a funny story yeah, concerning ahead. the trailer for this film. Mm-hmm. A good friend of mine mm-hmm. used to work at a movie theater. And every Saturday they would do, like, a kid's movie. Mm-hmm. Um, oh, I've heard this story. And so, the, you know, they were putting a trailer package together for this family film, mm-hmm. this kid's movie. And he may have accidentally attached the trailer for Devil's Rejects. <laughs> yeah, I've, I've heard this story, yeah. <laughs> yeah. So, like, a bunch of, like, 10-year-olds saw the trailer for this movie. Nice. 
they thought they were like gonna see Shrek or something. <laughs> they they didn't. Um, I one little qualm I have with the movie is at the very top. <sighs> you boy, you on thin ice. It's very it's very minor, but I I don't think you can have vo narration on on top of on screen text exposition. Mm, You're talking about the beginning, right? Yeah, well, he's there, there's <laughs> okay. There's well, the, funny let, story regarding yeah, let's, that. Let's so, share our story. I assumed I owned a copy of this movie. Uh huh. Yeah, it turns out I don't, <laughs> and like it's not online to stream anywhere. Yeah. So we had to find it on a excuse website. me online via other means. Yeah. And the first time we found it. It was in French. Ooh. <laughs> so we made it all through the VO, and I was like, oh, that's fine. It's probably not in French. Yeah. And then we made it to the first three lines. We're like, this is definitely in French. <laughs> definitely French. And we did. We debated watching it anyway. Yeah. I thought it'd be really funny if we just watched the movie in French yeah. when I have no idea what's happening. Yeah, that'd be great, because then you would have no context of what anyone said. <laughs> yeah. like that, fuck, that would have been better. I just was like, like, Mally, just keep this on. He's like, no... I wonder like, what just this entire episode is just Sammy like so this is what I think happened. <laughs> I wonder what Otis's like this... uh I am the devil line would sound like in French. Oh, oh my ooh. god. Now, we have to go back to that line. I might side note, I'm going to get a screen grab of like a like I'm going to rip that and send it to you. You got to put it into the episode somewhere. <laughs> <laughs> um we need more sound clips anyway. I agree. Uh did anyone else notice that and Priscilla pointed this out and it's a very good note. Uh, everyone's teeth are impeccable except for Captain Spaulding's. I yeah. did. I did notice that he has some grimy, <laughs> his, dirty yeah. teeth. Yeah, but his it, teeth look like Sammy's hair. And then, Ma- oh. <laughs> Ma- and then Mama Firefly's teeth are like fucking amazing. <laughs> oh, perfect, dude. I mean, she. You know, you heard her rap sheet. She did a lot of whoring. So, are they fake teeth? I was gonna say semen clean to teeth. Oh my god! Yeah, maybe that. I don't know. <laughs> um, that's all of my notes except for dick. Kind of works like a toothbrush. I don't know. <laughs> except for just to talk about the ending. So what do you? What else do you guys have? Let's talk about those transitions. Oh, oh, I love the, the transitions. best transitions of all time. Like some of them. So some of them were really good. Like the one that I liked was when Spalding <laughs> first wakes up and he goes to the bathroom. But then it cuts to him pouring coffee. But yeah. the, but I pee. thought it's, it was pee. Yeah. But yeah, it yeah. still has the ah. Yeah. yeah, yeah. So like it took me a second to register that it was coffee and not pee. And at yeah. first I was like, why is he peeing black liquid? Yeah. And then I was like, oh, it's coffee. Like that was good. But then there's other ones where they just freeze frame and like wipe. To I the love next it. Shot. Yes, I was. <laughs> it's amazing say, when they're when they go from. I think it's from Charlie to. Uh, to Otis and the motel room dudes out in the desert, and they just freeze frame mm-hmm. and slide to the left. I think it, it's so good for this movie. Yeah. Sorry, you don't like the slides, Sammy? No. Oh. No, I don't. I don't mind them. I was like, but you, they know, were... you don't fucking complain when Star Wars does it. <laughs> okay, I was about to say that. But it works for I a said, grindhouse was... movie. It does. Absolutely. Yeah. There was there was one transition where like it slid, but it was sliding to a picture, and it was just a like a selfie almost or like yeah. a random picture yeah, yeah. and then it just slides to the actual shot there's yeah. a lot of uh very random yeah there's some interesting editing techniques in this mm-hmm. movie there's a lot of interesting stuff in terms of like the cinematography and stuff like the yeah. there's so many freeze frames the ending that's done in like 12 frames per second <laughs> like the slowest slow-mo these, ever yeah. like and sammy literally i think the first thing sammy said after the end of this movie was I like how they put the last 10 minutes in slow motion solely so they could use as much of Freebird as possible. Yeah, <laughs> yeah they did. You you know they wanted yep. to use the entire song. Yeah. Um, right, because so like, I was watching and I was like, this seems like a lot of slow-mo. And then like it just it just kept going and going. And then it got to the point in the song where it ramps up and I was like, ah, they just really wanted to use the entire yeah. song. Yeah. Well, I like... And it is used brilliantly. I like I'm that bad. they... Like how they end the movie too with like the freeze frame and then the music cuts out for each character like it just feels like you're pausing what's happening in time and who knows how this ends you know what i mean i i have one qu- well all right let's talk about the actual ending okay do you want to set it up so, or do you want me to yeah i'll go okay so they spalding baby and otis are captured by Wydell, mm-hmm. and they're 
getting the fucking life tortured out of mm-hmm. tortured out of them. Can, like, can I can I pause you like, for a sec though? Because I got to. I guess. I just want to say, out of all of, like the murder he never and the lets me say anything. <laughs> I was just gonna say, out of all the murder and like the psychological and physical torture in this movie, I like the whole motel room scene seems gratuitous. I don't mind the torture of the rejects, and I I'm guessing that's just because of the like we talked about like the switch between protagonist versus villain. Like I could watch Wydell torturing them and like his monologue and why he's doing it and showing the photos of their victims. I could watch that, but in contrast, the motel room scene seems to go on forever and it's so uncomfortable and Wait, and you know that motel that motel room scene specifically the stuff with Otis and Roy's wife was originally 2 to 3 minutes longer. Yeah. And they mm-hmm. cut it down. Yeah. To get an R rating. I I believe it. <laughs> Fucked up. Um so anyway, Sorry. Just wanted to mention that. Anyway, <laughs> they're getting tortured, mm-hmm. and just as a fun little game, he decides to let Baby go. Yeah. So he can have his little, like, fun with his, her. His mistake. Yeah. His fatal and flaw. He, his Bond villain-ism. Um, and he lights the house on fire and leaves Otis and... Spalding. Cutter. Yeah. Sorry. I'm using, I'm using real names. Uh, okay. Um, to burn... <laughs> So he's chasing Baby. Charlie shows up. He axes him in the face. Well, actually, the neck. Um, and he's choking the life out of Baby. And lo and behold, Tiny X Machina shows up. Yeah. <laughs> um, who is a character from House of a Thousand Corpses, and he's actually one of the first characters you see in this movie. But literally, you see him and you see him, you see him watching the cops arrive, and you don't see him again until the end. Yeah. Um, he breaks Wydell's neck. He pulls so out the other two. Viciously too. Amazing, like all, yeah. like all the way around. Um, and you know that was what's the actor's name that plays him? Uh, Matt something, Matthew McGrory. You know that was his last role. Yeah, he passed away. He he passed away like a month later. Yeah, there's a um, in, in memory of during the, the ending credits. Yeah, I think that's the first thing that pops up, isn't it? Yeah. Uh, yeah, he's so fucking good in this movie too. Yeah, I loved his character. Um, tiny, good old tiny. <laughs> um. So he pulls the other two out of the house and Baby, Cutter, and Otis leave and Tiny like stays behind and Otis is like, you know, are you sure about this? And Tiny's like, yeah, yeah, I'm sure. He doesn't say that, but he nods. Yeah. <laughs> um, they drive away and, you know, Tiny just walks back into the house as it burns to the ground. Yeah. Which I wonder if it was originally written like that or that was something they did. Reshoots? Yeah. Since Matthew passed away, yeah, because that I don't know, that just seems like almost too beautiful of a send off for that character. Yeah, but it also like, doesn't make sense. Like I didn't get given the why context. he did that. He didn't want to leave his home. That was his home. Mm. Well, Tiny, I'm um, assuming, is kind of simple minded. Like yeah, the, well, the, and the he's obvious. Like he's obviously like a burn victim some or weird, something. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um, but anyway, so. We fade out, we fade back in on these beautiful shots mm-hmm. of, like, these mountains that just do not seem to fit with the rest of the movie. I was going to ask, where does this movie take place? Texas. Texas, Texas okay. for the most part, okay. yeah. Although it's so clearly L.A. and California. <laughs> <laughs> like, it bothers me the shot of the Firefly house. Yeah. Just these, like, beautiful mountains in the background. You're like, that's right outside of LA. I feel like this movie would be better served if it was like Louisiana or Mississippi or something to for like the real grimy hillbilly-esque feel that it's got going on because Texas doesn't have it has more redneckish than it does hillbilly I think. Well in the beginning uh, I think the sheriff said something about Alabama so I thought it took place in Alabama. Yeah I did too because he but makes then, that Alabama but then I noticed some Texas stuff. Yeah he makes that Alabama ass kick in line. <laughs> yes, 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 yes. But then I noticed a Texas license plate, and someone else said something about Texas. Yeah, it's all over okay. Texas. Um, anyway, those beautiful shots of supposedly Texas, that's definitely just California. Yeah. Um, excuse me. And then they stop, and you see that there's a whole ass line of cops waiting for them. And, you know, Otis wakes the other two up. They're all beaten, bloody, shot up, cut up. They grab their guns, they aim them, and right as that fucking epic ass solo in Freebird kicks in, they fucking, you know, pedal to the floor, shooting and charging at these cops. And we get a little, you know, of them getting shot, the cops getting shot, 
all while free birds are just... yeah. and they're getting blasted um, away the rejects yeah. <laughs> and then it just freeze frames on each one of them and then cut to black and this is my least favorite part of the film as uh, the sound of a bunch of gunshots being heard mm. and then roll credits i don't like the gunshots at the end yeah we don't need them I like it's with not it. it's not I, necessary I it, I think it felt just cheesy. yeah freeze frame it cut to black. Credits. I don't think we need the gunshots. Yep. Yeah, I agree. Um, so yeah, that's you know that's where the movie leaves us. You know, did they again when this movie came out? It was a big thing. It was like, well, you know, did they survive? Did they get away? Blah blah blah. They're and dead. I've always been <laughs> I've always been in the camp of Nah, dude. In my mind, they just kept blasting Freebird <laughs> and fucking drove straight through, blasted the fuck out of them cops. Do you think that's how the sequel is going to start? Them just drive barreling through that that police uh, barricade. I mean, judging from what I've seen of the sequel, which has been announced, it's in post production called Three from Hell. Mm-hmm. They're all they've been captured. They're in jail. Oh, okay. Yeah, they like should be all dead. The, they've only re- <laughs> yeah. they've released a photograph of at least each of them holding up like it's like the first image released was. Um, the, Otis, Otis holding up like a mug shot. Yeah. There's been a picture of Baby being like led down to a jail cell in cuffs, where you can see like the bullet hole scars on her mm. arms and shit. Yeah. And so, I mean, that's why I think we can't like silver linings. We can't go with the you know maybe they made it okay. I because we know I that disagree. they made it. Through. No, don't take the cheap fucking road, <laughs> but Dustin. It's not a cheap road if we're looking at this from a, as a standalone film, right? Since when do we look at this like a standalone? Since when do we look at it as as a one in a series? Like at the time when this came out, like for example, if we did this episode last season, we couldn't talk about the sequel and its implications, right? Right. So I'm looking, but I think, but <laughs> and that movie's not out yet. That movie, last season, that movie, Dustin. That movie could never come out. It could go into production hell for all we know, or not find a distributor. That's true. Post production hell. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> if you want, I will change my silver lining, but let's get... No, no, let's, it's fine. Let's get into but you're silver going linings first, then. I, dick. Mine is simply, they're dead, right? <laughs> like, they are dead. They get shot way too many fucking times, and these characters clearly aren't that invincible. Because one of them dies. The mom. Yeah. My silver lining is they're fucking dead. <laughs> I, I agree with you on that one. If I didn't know that there was another movie coming out, I would assume that the cops shot them while they're driving, or, you know, they drive through the barricade, but then they crash or something, because they're on, like, the side of a mountain. Yeah. So they just yeah. got shot at. They're super tired. And the odds of Otis crashing the car, very high. Not only that, we see them each get shot multiple times. Yeah. During oh, that yeah, like, in the, the chest, in the neck, shoulder, in the shoulders, yeah. arms. Everywhere. Like, they're... All fucked up. I'll tell you oh, what. Yeah. If if the mom didn't die in this movie, then there would be the implication, or at least the suspicion, that these characters are some type of supernatural, that they're invincible, right? But because we see that mom die, I have to assume that they're not invincible. And okay. that's, that's, fair. that's how I, my silver lining is, that they are dead and their reign of terror is over. Whether you see them as protagonists or antagonists, you know they're they're dead, and other people don't have to die now. <laughs> okay. And if you really want to um, get, I will go ahead and give yours. And if you if you really want me to go and take that out of the equation and look at the sequel as part of it, then I've got another one. But go ahead. No, no I mean I I kind of have two. Um, one is kind of loose. Um, it's you know as far at least for tiny. Um, you know, he died happy. Like, he died knowing that his family was okay, that they got away safely. Do you assume he's dead? Yes. yes. Okay. But then again, I don't know. We'll fucking see. We don't see him die, actually, um, but... I See, I, I think it's... Cause this if, a, I don't, th- I don't mentions... think Tiny will... I don't think Tiny will be in the sequel, because I think it's kind of like a out of respect for the actor thing. Yeah. Kind of like how Nolan didn't bring back or even mention the Joker in Dark Knight Rises. But Otis mentions... I don't think they would bring back Tiny. Yeah, Otis mentions that he'll be back for them. Yes. I mean, it could be like that, like, if you tell your... Like, like uh, 
the uh, Hank in Breaking Bad telling Marie he loved him and that he was coming home soon. That's like immediate, like immediately signing his death warrant. It could be something yeah. like that too. Also, Breaking Bad spoilers, Jesus. Well, if you haven't seen Breaking Bad, you you don't need to be alive anymore. So, Sammy, have you seen Breaking Bad? <laughs> uh, no comment. Oh my God, I'm so sorry. Wow, <laughs> You'll forget about the that. Enti- the entire show has been spoiled, That's so you're awkward. fine. Oh, it's such a good show. Even um, if it's spoiled, my- you gotta watch it. My other, even though I don't like this one, I'll be honest. Um, technically, Wydell, technically Wydell accomplished his mission. That was going to be my other one too. That whether or but not, but he didn't because they're still fucking alive. But mm-hmm. he doesn't die knowing that they are still alive. Like he he could True. he I is, mean, he he dies knowing baby's still alive. Yes, he but he doesn't die knowing Otis and. And Spalding are going to live. And even so, if we go in with the idea that they die at the end of this movie, he, he, I think maybe it's not necessarily that they die. It's that he gets his revenge, his torture. He gets mm-hmm. that outlet out. I think that's what more of his goal is. Which, one little thing about the ending I forgot to mention. So these scenes of them like bloodied up and beaten in the cars intercut with like home video footage yeah. of like the three of them just like frolicking in a field being like a happy family yeah. family is the root and core of this <laughs> film guys it is a family movie i'm convinced that that was just bts footage that like rob zombie shot you know like in between setups or something yeah. like that and he's just like you know what this makes for some great like intercutting b-roll i wouldn't put it past that past was it. actually footage of them at a barbecue yeah at Rob Zombie's house. There you go. Like a rap party. In costume. <laughs> um, Sammy, yeah. you don't have to have one, but do you have a silver lining for The Devil's Rejects? Uh, mine was going to be that Wydell, like, completed his mission, or that Whoops, he thinks he does. on toes. Right. But Mally jumped the gun. Um, <laughs> because he did, like he Mally said, he did get to torture them and let out that anger, and he thinks that uh, Spalding and Otis died. Mm-hmm. So that was going to be mine, but Mally likes to overstep that's my fault well we can well you can go even <laughs> further and say that george george's uh legacy has been avenged like true if we're, yes, if we're yes, going yes. with the theory that they're dead at the end of the movie which again taking out the sequel then yeah mm-hmm. that he george is avenged <laughs> yeah yeah the mission is completed yeah um how do we oh wait i have another oh, one god <laughs> neither of those chickens got fucked. there you go <laughs> um how do we feel about the idea of a sequel? I am curious, but I... I'm fucking in. I want to see these three characters some more. That's fair. Okay. I'm fucking down. I'm, like I said, I... I'm going to see also, it. Also, Danny Trejo is returning. Uh, okay. I don't know if it's as oh. the same character. Yeah. I fucking hope so. Yeah. <laughs> because I would love to see fucking the Unholy 2 make a return. Yeah. Because they were fucking so much fun in this movie. I'm cu- if he's in it, I'm sold. Yeah, I'm curious. I'm definitely going to see it. Uh, I'll save my judgments for whether or not this should be where the series ends or not until after I've seen it. Mm. Holding my reservations. Yeah. Um, I'm, I'm pretty curious. All right. So we talked about it earlier, but pick me up movie alternatives, Mally. What's a movie people should watch after watching The Devil's Rejects to lift their spirits back up if they're uh, feeling upset or uncomfortable or whatever? I'm sticking with a. Uh, I'm gonna stick with a Trey, Danny Trejo classic okay. film. If you didn't get enough Trejo in this movie, you can get it in. Con Air. <laughs> All right, <laughs> Con Air is a fun one. Another movie where you kind of find yourself rooting for the villains, you know? Yeah, mm. it's good. Kind of want to see what happens. Fair point. Um, I'm going a little bit of a deeper cut. Um, like I mentioned, I like Sid Haig a lot. I think he's. He's he's interesting uh, just as a person, um, and another movie that he is he's in in a in a small part, but he is all he is in is uh, another kind of goofy, lighthearted movie that all you won't have to take it seriously. But I'm going with Diamonds Are Forever, a uh, James Bond film that also features one of my favorite Bond girls in it, Plenty O'Toole. Uh, Interesting choice. Yeah, he is in it. It's I went back through his IMDb to see like you know what all I've seen him in. He's been in everything man oh yeah like i'm literally on his imdb right now he was in the mission impossible insane. tv series he was in uh tj hooker like he he's been there from like the beginning yeah like his first credit is 1960 yeah holy crap yeah and i mean and he's worked pretty steady yep. every single year 73 was a great year for him yeah 
He was in one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, seven films. Damn. Uh, Sammy, what about you? Do you have a movie in mind that you would like other people to watch after they watch Devil's Rejects? Also in 1976. <laughs> um, I don't have one prepared. Okay. But I will say, after we watched the movie, Mally put on a Netflix special of Jim Jeffries. Okay. And that was, <laughs> that was uh, an interesting thing to watch right after that. It's also some more uh, crude humor. You know, so you got yes. that theme kind of going on. Yes, 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 yes. I'm assuming that's the new special, right, that he has out? Yeah. I haven't seen yeah. it. Is it. Do you recommend also, it? Also, I think I just found a yeah, picture of bad. Sid Haig in blackface. Oh. Uh. Delete that. Um, so I guess we should. Oh, uh, wait. No, he's just really tan. Never mind. Okay. I guess we should say whether or not we recommend this movie, right? I, I think it's unanimous that we do. Oh, yeah. Okay. Absolutely. Absolutely. All right. Do you think people need to see the first one or should see the first one before or after? I think it's fun if you do. Okay. I kind of um, recommend seeing it know. after just because it's two what? wildly different tones and they're not I mean they're they're connected obviously because of the characters, but really the story is not they're kind of separate things. Um I mean that's how I saw it was I saw House of a Thousand Corpses after. So I'm maybe it's unconventional, but that's what I'm going with. As someone who has Interesting. only, yeah, as someone who's only seen The Devil's Rejects, uh, I guess I feel obligated to watch House of a Thousand Corpses. Mm-hmm. Um, but I mean, for someone who's only seen this one, you don't need to Agreed. watch House of a Thousand Corpses to understand it. You get everything that's going on. Agreed. It's not that deep. All right. Well, that is uh, The Devil's Rejects from 2005. Um, thank you for listening, everyone. Please subscribe and leave us a rating wherever you're at right now. Uh, you can find us on iTunes, Spotify, Stitcher, Google Play, and YouTube. Uh, we're also on Facebook, Instagram, and Twitter. You can just search the Silver Linings playlist. I'm sure we'll come up. Uh, you can go also to our subreddit, reddit.com slash r slash Silver Linings playlist. There's no the. Uh, you can find the official discussion thread for the Devil's Rejects, and you can leave the contest code we gave you for a chance to win some free stuff. Uh, or you can just talk about the film. Uh, you can leave us a suggestion for a movie you think we should cover. Give us feedback. Whatever you want to do, you can do it there. Uh, Sammy, thank you so much for being on the show. I'm glad you at least had a fun movie to watch. Sometimes they're not always <laughs> fun. Um, but yeah, it was great having you. And uh, we'll, If you'd like to, we'd like to have you back on in the future sometime. Yeah, I would love to. This was great. All right. Uh, Mally, is there any other business we want to discuss before I give out the clue for next week's episode? No, go for it, man. Well, next week's my choice. And following the theme Ugh. of death, uh, next week we're going to get dead as Dillinger. And, uh, yeah, it's going to be a very interesting, interesting. episode. So uh, Interesting. Okay. All right. This was a good one, guys. So, Mally, until next week, as always, Tootie Excelsior. Fucking uh, I should have seen that coming. Yeah, you really should have.